I know all of you remember this bulletin coming from the U.S. government warning to avoid large gatherings over the next 48 hours. That location, Moscow, Russia. Just weeks afterwards, the attack occurs. We've now learned more details and exactly what the U.S. government knows, but that isn't the story. The story is now they have put out a comparable warning, but this time not for Russia but for the United States, U.S. intel warns of potential terrorist threat at gatherings after the Moscow attack, now circling back to the homeland. Because now, the U.S. intelligence community is not warning Moscow any further. No, they're warning the U.S. U.S. intel warns of potential terrorist threat at gatherings, this all coming after the Moscow attack. Just Days prior to the eclipse occurring tomorrow, all of this folding together, we've reported on the rockets being fired by NASA. We've reported on the state of emergencies being declared across the United States. We've reported on CERN firing up their Hadron Collider once again, but now this is new and developing, and the story we're going to cover for you here today. Lisa and I have only one thing to ask you today, one thing only. I need you to go in your browser and type in restrictedrepublic.com. I want you to get there and subscribe today. Use discount code RR39 at annual checkout. I would love to tell you the multiple reasons why we need you there, but the moment you're there, you will understand. This is where we put all the information you've been looking for. The information you're going to need as events that continue to transpire are picking up pace. We know that that is our bastion to provide you the news that you've been looking for. RestrictedRepublic.com, RR39 annual checkout. Get there today for both of us. Please subscribe 14 days for free. But now let's get back to this broadcast. So when I left you, here's why the total solar eclipse has prompted state of emergencies in parts of the U.S. Not what we're going to cover. No, we're going to cover something different now. Because the U.S. intelligence officials are warning of violence targeting mass gatherings days before millions gather to watch the eclipse. What will happen? We're not here to tell you that. We don't have any specific intelligence, nor, well, at least as far as it's reported, does our U.S. government. However, it was enough to prompt a warning exactly comparable to the one that they provided to Moscow, well, days before the tragedy that occurred. I want you to listen in here for just one moment. Security warning right here in the U.S. from the FBI and Homeland Security. Warning of potential threats to public gatherings. The timing of this and why they're concerned tonight. Here's our Chief Justice Correspondent Pierre Thomas with late reporting. All right, we'll come back to that reporting, but let me give you a little bit more color and details. We now know the U.S. intelligence is warning of a potential threat against the United States. We have watched as the FBI and our intelligence agency have seen an increase in reported threats, some coming after the Israeli attack, some coming after the attack in Moscow, but it has picked up pace. What are they concerned about? A lone offender or lone wolf event is the most specific that I've read so far. Bulletin advises of potential lone offender attacks as U.S. counterterrorism officials work to detect homeland threats. This in October, but things move forward. We then get a bulletin of the threat environment from the U.S. Department of Homeland Security and the FBI on October 25th of 2023, warning of the same concerns. Now focusing on mass gatherings, big events, and churches to be more specific. Then comes December 12th of 2023, threat of violence likely heightened throughout Winter. This coming out of the FBI, Department of Homeland Security, and National Counterterrorism Center are issuing the public service announcement to highlight potential threats in the United States from a variety of actors during the winter season. This is an update to the prior bulletin I showed you, but we roll forward even further. We have now learned that the U.S. not only put a warning up in Moscow, Russia, but also told Russia specifically that it was going to be Crocus City Hall as a possible target of the attack. 
as that saga continues to unfold. They named the specific target, and now we have this alert happening in the United States. Just a few days ago, releasing this mega bulletin, U.S. Intel warns of potential terrorist threats at gatherings after the Moscow attack. Let's go further with this report. Tonight, FBI and Homeland Security officials are warning U.S. law enforcement about the potential for terror inspired by that deadly ISIS attack in Moscow targeting a concert hall. So there you have it, FBI, Homeland Security, increasingly worried about threats from ISIS and lone wolves in the U.S. as I start to give you a little bit more detail. They are not alone in these warnings. Here is Senator Tom Cotton. So U.S. intelligence had issued warnings publicly and privately about this group and a potential attack in Russia. You sit on Senate intelligence. How worried are you about an attack like that on our soil? Well, I am very worried about it. And again, you don't even have to sit on the Intelligence Committee and have classified intelligence. You can just listen to what the commanding general of our force in the Middle East said, that in as little as six months, you could have an attack like this. And again, it turned out to be six days. This is a lot of chatter. This is a lot of noise. ISIS-K could slip through the U.S. border. We've read this report to you before and carry out Moscow-style attack, U.S. officials warn. But is anyone listening? Well, based on the most recent report of the annual threat assessment, it doesn't give us much comfort. I'll explain more in just a second. I guess what I would say is this. From an FBI perspective, we are seeing a wide array of very dangerous threats that emanate from the border. So I want to be a little bit careful how far I can go in open session, but there, uh, you know, there is a particular network um, that uh, has uh, where some of the overseas facilitators of the smuggling network have ISIS ties uh, that we're very concerned about uh, and that we've been spending enormous amount of effort with our partners investigating. Um, uh, exactly what that network is up to uh, is something that's, again, the subject of our current investigation. FBI Director Chris Ray, you heard it there just last month. Some of the overseas facilitators of the smuggling have ISIS ties that we're very concerned about. We're trying to figure out what they're doing, to be more specific. The annual threat assessment coming out just a few weeks ago. New opportunities for collective action with state and non-state actors alike will emerge out of these complex and interdependent issues. The 2024 annual threat assessment highlights some of those connections as it provides the IC's baseline assessment of the most pressing threats to U.S. national interest. It is not an exhaustive assessment of all global challenges. However, it addresses traditional and non-traditional U.S. adversaries and array of regional issues with possible larger global implication, as well as a functioning and transnational challenges such as proliferation, emerging technology, terrorism, and illicit drugs. A warning coming off this assessment, but are we prepared to handle that warning? Depends on who you ask. U.S. Threat Assessment Report has several blind spots, this reporter calls out. Going down a little bit deeper to challenges, the report needs more strategic and integrated intelligence to appropriately describe today's threats to the United States and its partners and allies. So they asked Jack Gaines, foreign policy consultant out of Washington, D.C., what he felt about the report. He says he's more concerned about the report than the threats contained within it. They ask him to elaborate. The director of national intelligence oversees all U.S. intelligent community reports. Still... The report seems to focus heavily on military assessments with either minor or no input from the rest of the community. As a result, it has unnecessary blind spots. They ask him, the sort of intelligence blind spots that 9-11 Commission report discussed? Well, yes and no. Before 9-11, the Cold, era, Cold War era intelligence construct missed the terrorism indicators, which resulted in a devastating attack on U.S. soil. Are we now looking at the same thing. Why now this bulletin just prior to millions preparing to watch the eclipse? I'm going to go ahead and let ABC go on a little bit further in this story. The bulletin coming just days before millions will gather to watch the eclipse on Monday. Authorities say following the Moscow attack, ISIS and its supporters celebrated the assault and shared graphic and violent attack footage. The terror group calling for similar attacks in the United States. That is the Joint Intelligence Bulletin and some of the wording within it. 
We have the states of emergencies declared. We have NASA activity. We have CERN activity. And now circling back around to our paramount concern, not again stating anything will happen, just reporting on what is happening in real time. Because now the U.S. intelligence community decided it was important enough right now to warn of mass gatherings. I'm told U.S. law enforcement is being urged to take this bulletin seriously. Sources to say ISIS remains a very real threat. They- urging local law enforcement to take this bulletin extremely seriously. The same sort of bulletin that was issued in Moscow just prior to the attack has now been issued for the United States as a potential warning surrounding this large mass gatherings that will occur across the United States tomorrow. We will continue to monitor this situation. We wanted to make sure, however, that we told you what the U.S. government was issuing so you were aware and could make the right decisions for you and your family. We love you all. Until next time, Godspeed and God bless. Justice Knight, signing out.